sometimes strange things come into my shop, and this is one of them, a pair of gardening shears. What do they have to do with woodworking? Very little, if anything, but they are sharpened the same way as other tools are sometimes, and this is a pair that have a, a, wavy, edge, a wavy edge on here, and this is a pair that's been neglected for a year, just left, it's gone rusty, they don't cut too well, and what do you do? Do you just go out and buy a new pair? Or can they be restored? Yes, they can. And what we're going to do is we're going to file this edge here and here. We're going to clean out the rust. We're going to restore these shears and it'll take about five minutes to get them cutting like they should cut. So we're going to take out the nut and the bolt through the center of this and remove that. And then I'm going to show you, you're going to remove the rust and we'll do that in just a minute. You don't need very much to remove the rust, just some 250 grit sandpaper, any kind of abrasive paper will work. Can you see this white line along here? This is from when I opened up the shears and closed them again and it took off that surface of rust there, so you've got that white line. So I, I don't want to touch that with the sandpaper, but I'm going to touch in here and take this back down. This is slightly hollow ground in here. You can see, I think, I can see anyway, this is slightly hollow to ground, but I am avoiding this white edge here. I'm not going into that white edge, I'm going inside of that white edge. Get rid of the rust, just get rid of it. Rust is always a sign of neglect. So take off the rust that was causing these to bind before. In here it doesn't matter, you can go right into the edge, it wouldn't matter, but here you want to avoid that edge because you want the shearing action along that face. So we're getting rid of the rust on the outside. And then we're going to oil those faces just to make sure that the rust doesn't deepen. And then we're going to, from here on, we're going to stay on top of these shears and they're going to stay in good shape for the rest of their life. In here you could use a wire brush if you have one. Go in here. Remove that rust in between, go down that back edge here, right up to the tip, take out that rust. Now any steel wool, a steel brush will do. If you're using a steel brush, the, the, the brush itself is going to be hardened steel usually, so you don't want to go on this edge here. Just go in here and then take all the rust off the back here as well, get down to steel, clean up the inside of this one and then we're ready to sharpen. Now I've got the rust knocked off, it feels nice in my hand, uh, I've removed as much rust as I need to. This flat face here still has this in, can you see I stayed away from it and what I might do on this face, if you have a, a diamond file like this, a flat file, there's different um, types, here's a medium one, I would go on this face inside here keeping it registered on the back here and on the forepart because this is slightly hollow. And I would just take a few strokes on this face because these edges here must come together. The important thing is not to lift up one tiny bit because you'll put a back bevel on this edge and the shears will not cut. So keep it flat, just take out the surface only like that, not much more than that. I'm right up to the tip, very happy with that. Same on this one. You can put water on here as well, but don't put a lot. You can take a flat file on this face here, but make sure you register all the way across and do not lift up, do not lift up this way. Keep it dead flat across this face, that will work. So now we're gonna go in the vise. We just need something that's going to secure this so we can file along this whole edge. I'm gonna sit down to get down to the work. Now, these are not super bad. They're not as bad as I've seen some, but we want to use a file. You could use a narrow flat file. This is a little three quarter inch, eight inch flat file. Or you could use what I'm going to use here is just a three cornered saw file and this will work perfectly and I'm referring to a saw file it's really just got three wide flat faces and I just come along here 
and I just feel for the edge. Now I'm going to put my hands back here. Normally my hand would be here on this side and I would be putting an equal pressure along here but because you can't see, I'm coming in here and I'm just going along this face here and I'm filing out along the bell. You can see I've angled. I'm trying to follow the bevel of the original ground angle here. It's got two bevels on this. And that's given me a burr all the way along that edge. And now I could go with this finer piece of uh, equipment. This is just a diamond file. If you don't have one of these, don't worry. Just go straight from your file because these are going to cut beautifully when we're done. Back onto this file just to take off the burr from this side. You don't even need to do that. When you put the shears together, they're going to break off anyway. That's just a burr left from unsupported steel. So here again, onto this side, just the same. I'm angling following the bevel. So I'm going right in that crest into the hollow here. So if these were flat, you'd just be going with a draw file along the length. This is pretty hard steel here. So you can draw file here like this. You can draw file all the way along this edge to refine it. And if you have diamonds, just go in. If you don't, you could wrap a piece of sandpaper. But the problem with sandpaper is it's going to round this edge. Flip over. You could just use your file, go along here, just take off that burr off the inside face without lifting up. And now these are, these are very sharp. They're feeling very sharp now. So we just need to reassemble these. This will go only one way, not that one. I've got a washer in this side. I'm going to oil these as well when I'm done because I want this to be protected after I've got this raw steel together. So I've got a spring washer on here. Can you see this? This spring washer will be on most um, shears and scissors of some type. And what happens, the pressure on that spring washer will close up when I put the lock nut on. So this has a lock nut. It has a little rubber or uh, uh, plastic seal inside here that tightens up and keeps this from coming undone. So this is very important too. So cinch it tight. I'm going to use a crescent wrench here. So this needs to be tightened all the way down. Get it dead tight and then we'll go back in and we'll oil it and we'll try these shears out. So now we just need a little drop of oil. I've got the, the, um, the nut and bolt seated nicely. Right pressure. So I'm just coating all the bare faces here. And this is what you should do after you've mowed, after you've not mowed, after you've um, cut your hedge, um, trimmed your garden, border, whatever you're doing with these shears. A uh, little drop right in between here, just to, ooh, those feel nice now. And then take up the excess after you've opened and closed them a dozen times like this. And then you're ready to go into the garden and you're going to cut your hedge and you are ready to go here with your garden shears all the way to the edge great thank you i hope you enjoyed that now i can go and get on with the garden